sign and a wonder testifying yes. of sure. eternal life? Yes. Yes. Because they're dying. Yes. And now there's something in these people that is actually overcoming the suffering of this death. What is it? See how now they're walking away considering? Yes. I saw a life in those people that overcame the corruption in the earth. Right. What is that? Mm -hmm. What are they busy with? Do you see how you walk away now contemplating mm -hmm. God and life and death? Same kind of thing if we preach the gospel right. At some, even if a person rejects it now because things are going well for them, at some point in their life, they're going to be confronted with their mortality. Yeah. They're going to be confronted with the thought. Life and death. Do I want life or not? Right? Yeah. And when the gospel's presented, right, they realize it's not about, well, I gotta get plugged into a church and I gotta serve the church. I gotta get plugged in and I gotta do my stuff and I gotta go on this and do that. When they realize it ain't got nothing to do with that, but it's just about a guy wanting to give you the most precious thing there is, it's eternal life. Right. You know, like in our society, we describe the preciousness of something by its rarity. Right? Like, so if there's one of a thing, we think, my goodness, that thing is very valuable. Like you even say, well, they made 500 of these cars. Right. Like the Shelby's or whatever. Yeah, right. right? Well, they only made 500 of these cars, and it makes their value very great. Or there's only three baseball cards like this. Or they only made 10 coins like this. There's only three stamps like this. And so the thing is very valuable. We all want to have a thing that no one else can have. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like we say, we don't like cookie cutter houses because we want our house to look unique. <laughs> right? Because we think that makes it more valuable. Yeah. We don't want somebody to have the same clothes that we have on because it makes it more valuable. And so the value of a thing is found in its uniqueness. Now, eternal life is the thing that's the most rare and unique thing that's ever existed in the cosmos because there's only one guy that has it. That's how rare and precious this thing is. And he thought so much of man that he wanted to give it to us as a gift. He saw this thing, and he knows how precious it is. He knows nothing has it but him. And he's thought so much of us that he wanted to give it to us as a gift so that we could have it also. When we see it in that respect, it becomes difficult to say no to life. Sure. I mean, who doesn't want to have life as a free gift? Yeah. What do you, no, I don't want it. You see, but their mind doesn't jump to that. What do I got to do for God? Does that mean I got to stop going to hang out with my buddies at the bar? Does that mean I can't play pool no more and throw darts? I can't play foosball? I can't drink <laughs> beer at a game? That means I got to That means I gotta lay down my life and take up my cross. <laughs> got to wear a tie on Sunday. Take, taking up your cross would just be to say, I see the life the world can give me, and I see the life God, who said he's my father, has offered to give me as a gift. I'm taking the life he's offered me. That would be what it means to take up your cross. Yeah. It would mean to choose life instead of choosing death. We're not even weighing really two lives. I know we say the life in the world and the life that God gave us, but the life that's in the world is death. It's death, right. How do you know? <laughs> because everybody that's born into the world ends up in the grave. Right? Yes. And so we're weighing life and death. And when a person is just confronted with that, who doesn't want life? Who doesn't know that they're perishing. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows yeah. they're in need of life. Everybody in this world, should a guy stand in front of them and actually be able to convince them that they possess the ability to clothe upon their mortal body with immortality and to clothe upon this earth with immortality and that they want to let them live in earth and reign for all eternity, everybody in this world would be, ah, mm -hmm. that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. You mean I can live forever in my youth? I can even walk on the water? Yeah, yeah man, I watch those X-Men movies, and when I see those guys doing those things, there's something in me that says, I ought to be able to do something like that. That's right. You can, man. It's called immortality. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. See, now they're able to have the real conversation that God's trying to have with them instead of all this nonsense. Now, that doesn't mean once you have life, you might not feel a desire to do something. I give all the time, not because I think that's what I have to do for God. I just feel that I have so much that it just happens, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm not performing or thing or think I must do a thing. Becky and I go to Mumford and Son concerts all the time. Becky and I were down in the French Quarter today. We were walking on Bourbon Street today. I hope you were witnessing. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Listen, just by being there, I was witnessing. There you go. You're right, bro. That's exactly right. Do you, do, do, do you see? And so, man, and that's that's one of the beautiful things about what what seeing immortality in its proper light does. It subconsciously allows the gospel message to get shaped properly. You begin thinking about justice properly. It doesn't have a thing to do about disobedience. It has to do with it wasn't God's plan for us to be dying, and so we were dying. That was the injustice. Like when we see a person die in the earth, don't we, aren't we filled with this thought that it wasn't right? Yes. It's unjust that that happened. Yes. We feel sad. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what God was busy thinking. Right. And so then we can see the justice of God is that he took man that was dying, that he never wanted to die, and he raised that man up. Justice served, like Bernie said. Right. This guy has been cleansed from the wound of death. Right? He's been cleansed from the death. Now, when God raised Jesus from the dead, like in Bernie's third message, he talked about Jesus, the only begotten of the Father. Yeah. Or he was begat of God. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he became the first human being that was in the image and likeness of God. Because now he had immortality in his physical body. First born from the dead. First born among many brethren. It's actually... When you think of God as one, which he is one, that's actually how God got it right to finish the second part of let us create man in our image after our likeness. Because Christ is the word. And there had to be a word that existed in a human body that said this human's glorified. And so that's how God got right the second part of let us create man after our likeness. Because now there's a human clothed in immortality. Now there's a word that's revealing to man what God promised to do in a human body. That God can conquer death. That God can restore and redeem the human body. Now everybody who believes on that word will find the work of God or God's original intent in creation being fulfilled in them when their body is raised up glorified and mortal. Because they'll be after God's likeness. Yeah. What likeness? Immortality yeah. in a human body. And Bertie hit on that ungodliness doesn't mean that you're a bad person ungodliness means you're dying god doesn't isn't dying and if you're dying that makes you unlike god right <laughs> we think right. of ungodly as the evil person who's stealing from the store right. or lying no no ungodly just means you're dying god doesn't die and so if you're dying that makes you not like god right. in that respect yeah right yeah and so that's how god got it right to finish the second part of it. That's why when Jesus comes back in Revelation and it says, I am Alpha and Omega, it is done. What's done? Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Because that's when all those who believed are going to be raised up glorified and mortal, just like Jesus was raised up glorified and mortal, and Elohim is going to say, that which we set out to do, which was to make man in our image after our likeness, is done. Wow. Because there's going to be a whole bunch of humans walking around glorified and mortal. Yes. Which is what he was after. Yeah. Right? Right. 